I want to ask both of you about the people that you're going to bring into the government. And our best insight yet is who you picked as your running mates. So I'll begin by asking both of you this question. And I'll ask you to answer first, Senator Obama. Why would the country be better off if your running mate became president rather than his running mate? Well, uh, Joe Biden, I think, is one of the finest public servants uh, that has served in this country. Uh, it's not just that he has some of the best foreign policy credentials of, of anybody, uh, and Democrats and Republicans alike, I think, acknowledge uh, his expertise there. Uh, but it's also that uh, his entire life, he has never forgotten where he came from. Coming from Scranton, fighting on behalf of working families, uh, remembering what it's like to see his father lose his job and, and go through a downward spiral economically. And as a consequence, uh, his consistent pattern throughout his career is to fight for the little guy. Uh, that's what he's done when it comes to economic policies that will help working families get a leg up. That's what he's done when it comes to, for example, passing the uh, landmark 1994 crime bill. Uh, the Violence Against Women's Act. Uh, Joe has always made sure that he is fighting on behalf of working families. And I think he shares uh, my core values and my sense of where the country needs to go. Because uh, after eight years of failed policies, uh, he and I both agree that what we're going to have to do is to reprioritize, make sure that we're investing in the American people, give tax cuts not to the wealthiest corporations, but give them to small businesses and give them to uh, individuals who are struggling right now. Make sure that we finally get serious about energy independence, something that has been languishing in Washington for 30 years. And make sure that our kids get a great education and can afford to go to college. So uh, on the key issues that are of importance to American families, Joe Biden's already always been on the right side, and I think he will make an outstanding president if, heaven forbid, something happened to me. Senator. Well, Americans have gotten to know Sarah Palin. They know that she's a role model to women and other and reformers all over America. She's a reformer. She, is, she took on a governor who was a member of her own party when she ran for governor. When she was ahead of their Energy and Natural Resources Board, she saw corruption, she resigned she, and, and said, this can't go on. She's given money back to the taxpayers. She's cut the size of government. She negotiated with the oil companies and faced them down a $40 billion pipeline of natural gas that's going to relieve the energy needs of, the United, of, of what they call the lower 48. She's a reformer through and through. And it's time we had that breath of, fresh air, breath of fresh air coming into our nation's capital and sweep out the old boy network and the cronyism that's been so much a part of it that I've fought against for all these years. She'll be my partner. She understands reform. And by the way, she also understands special needs families. She understands that autism is on the rise. But we've got to find out what's causing it. And we've got to reach out to these families and help them and give them the help they need as they raise these very special needs children. She understands that better than almost any American that I know. I'm proud of her and that she has ignited our party and people all over America that have never been involved in the political process. And I can't tell you how proud I am of her and her family. Her husband's a pretty tough guy, by the way, too. Do you think she's qualified to be president? You know, I think it's, that's going to be up to the uh, uh, American people. I think that uh, obviously she's a uh, capable uh, politician who uh, has, I think, excited uh, the, uh, a base in, in the Republican Party. Uh, and I think it's very commendable, uh, the work she's done on, on behalf of special needs. Uh, I agree with that, John. I, I do want to just point out that uh, autism, for example, or other special needs uh, will require some additional funding if we're going to get serious uh, in terms of research. That is something that every family that uh, advocates on behalf of disabled children talk about. And if we have a across-the-board spending freeze, we're not going to be able to do it. That's an example of, I think, the kind of uh, the use of the scalpel that we want to make sure that we're funding some of those programs. Do you think Senator Biden is qualified? 
Well, I think that Joe Biden is qualified in many respects, but I do point out that he's been wrong on many foreign policy and national security issues, which is supposed to be his strength. He voted against the first Gulf War. He voted against it, and obviously we had to take Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait or it would have threatened the Middle Eastern world supply. In Iraq, he had this cockamamie idea about dividing Iraq, Iraq into three countries. We're seeing Iraq united as Iraqis, it's tough, hard, but we're seeing them. We're now about to have an agreement for status of forces in Iraq coming up. Uh, there are several issues in which, frankly, Joe Biden and I openly and honestly disagreed on national security policy, and he's been wrong on a number of the major ones. But again, I, I want to come back to, you know, notice every time Senator Obama says, we need to spend more, we need to spend more, that's the answer. Uh, why do we always have to spend more? Why can't we have transparency, accountability, reform of these agencies of government? Maybe that's why he's asked for 860, sought and proposed $860 billion worth of new spending right. and, and wants to raise people's taxes in a time of incredible challenge and difficulty and heartache for the American Let, let's families. Go to, let's go to a new topic here.